we had the biggest patch possibly coming to set 12 because Riot Games is calling this set 12 and a quarter. But I actually think it's actually like a 12.5 because of how much they're doing because they're reworking a ton of champions, they're adding a new item, and they're buffing and nerfing a gazillion things. We have the summary over here. I'm going to be giving my thoughts on each and every one of the changes as we read them, but as you can see already, they're reworking five traits, like 10 champions, adding in a new thing called a golden frying pan, changing some of the augments, nerfing the hero augments, nerfing some of the reroll comps, and then buffing some of the forecasts. I also heard they're changing the rolling odds. So let's just get right into this because there's a lot to go through. So there's a rotating shop, Lee Sin, I think that's Katarina, Gwen, new map. All right, good stuff. Dev double up. TFT devs are doubling up to talk talkers trial and a new way to rank up in the Dawn of Heroes revival. Check it out here. Let's just focus on the regular TFT first, but system changes. I've been looking forward to this, the golden frying pan. Most of the changes they add to TFT, I'm like, eh, whatever, or oh, why did they do that? But I actually love the golden frying pan because you're able to make more spats. And I think that's pretty cool because there are a lot of emblems that are uncraftable, but now you can make them. So those breakpoints that you would normally never hit are now possible. So pan and sword is hunter emblem. Pan and rod is mage. Pan and bow, multi-striker makes sense. Pan and tear, scholar. Glove is warrior. Ironically, this is the only combo in real life that actually works. Pan and belt, shapeshifter emblem. Pan and cloak, preserver. Armor is bastion. And then pan and spatula is tactician's cape emblem. They're also adding in a pan and pan, which is tactician shield emblem. And then reforging an emblem can now turn it into any other emblem. So they're pretty much getting rid of all the uncraftables, which I think is pretty cool. But let's get into some of the other changes. Tactician's tools, new and reworked. Tactician shield which is the item they were talking about before over here, which is pan and pan. Your team gains one max team size. It also gives you a 10% chance to drop one gold when the holder dies. And then the cape gives your team one max team size and then 10% chance to drop one gold after 10 seconds of combat. And lastly, tactician's crown, which is made from two spatulas. Your team gains plus one max team size and 10% chance to drop one gold when you win combat. So all these three things do similar stuff. I'd say the best one probably is going to be the middle one. You're probably going to get the most proccing of that one. You might not win every round for this one, and sometimes when you do win with the shield, your unit might not die, so probably the middle one's the best. But it's only 10% chance, so it's not the end of the world if it does not. Reforging a spatula turns it into a frying pan and vice versa, so there's a lot of consistency there. And it no longer changes into a random component, which is what it used to do before. Reforging a tactician's item turns it into another tactician's item. I guess you could play around with that a little bit. And could the legend be true? Shield, cape, crown, and who? So there's apparently an Easter egg if you get all three of them. So if someone ends up managing to get that, let me know down in the comments below if you do. Doesn't have to be in this video. Could be in a different one. Because of course you guys are all subscribed to my channel. So by the time you hit it, hopefully a new one will be out by then. And you could comment down there. Where and when to cook with a pan. So now that we know how and what to cook, how are we adding pans to the convergence? Well, as I say, out of the orbs, portals, and charms into the frying pan. Yeah, sure. Uh, gold orbs, prismatic orbs, and carousel now have a chance to have frying pans. There's also a frying pan portal where you start with a frying pan and then let them cook portal, start with a frying pan and a spatula. And lastly, conjure frying pan charm, which is 15 gold, gain a frying pan. So pretty much every time you could get a spatula, you can now also get a pan. Let's move on into the item remover. So this is one of the changes that I disagree with, but you now gain an item remover from the first loot or dropped each PVE round if you don't already have one. So essentially you always have a remover to play around with. They did this to make the game more beginner friendly and I, I get that, but I feel like there was strategy that you have to kind of judge when you slammed an item on perhaps a suboptimal champion. I feel like that was like a big part of TFT, like making trade-offs, but now you just don't have the trade-off anymore. Now you just slam items like a monkey on whoever, and then you can remove it later. The drop rate of natural item removers has been lowered with the addition of guaranteed remover drops. And all right, yeah. This is a similar change to before where you used to get a unit off the carousel and the item stayed on that unit, but then they changed it so that it always pops off. It's kind of similar to that change, which I also disagreed with, but that one I disagreed with like not that much. This one I'm like pretty against, but it's here to stay. I can't do anything about it, you know? Uh, four star units, that's a lot of stars, but the only star that matters to me is the one that just finished reading the sentence. Hey there, hello. Uh, one cost champions can now be upgraded to four star. 
with three three-star copies. I saw a photo of someone who was worth the wait where they had like over 20 copies of Jax's or something like that. I think they had two three-star Jax's and a couple of two-stars. I don't remember exactly how much it was, but it was a lot. And it would be kind of cool to get a four-star champion, even though it's very difficult to do. Uh, the way to do it is to get something like Worth the Weight, and then also get that charm where it says, get a random three-star one-cost unit, and then you could get a ton of copies. But another trick you could do, normally when you get a three-star champion, you can't see them in your shop anymore. But if you start combat, and you have one of the units active on the board as a two-star, and then you have the rest of the upgraded units on your bench, if you keep rolling, you could still see it, and then you get a new copy of it. And then after the turn ends, you upgrade the the unit into a three star because you already have nine copies and then you have your extra copy on your bench still and that way you could still see the units in your shop so if you want to chase it i guess that could be fun but it'd be much easier to do with stuff like worth the wait where you get a free copy of a champion every single turn armories reduce misclick lockout from 1.5 seconds to 0.8 seconds so this is supposed to be a quality of life buff that allows you to fully take advantage of your incredible apm toma traits we're closing the book on Toma Traits now that we have new ways to craft emblems with more straightforward and intuitive rules. This change completely agree with. I absolutely hated Toma Traits. It was so stupid because you had to tailor your board and you had to purposely like sack some rounds to do so. And then you do that whole sacking thing and then you pop it and then you get not what you want anyways. It felt pretty horrible, to be honest. Drops that previously granted Toma Traits, such as Prismatic Orbs, Radiant Blessings, Loot Subscription, have been replaced with similar value contents, such as Support Anvils, Frying Pans and Spatulas, and Component Anvils. So that's pretty cool. I hated this thing with a passion. Shop odds, we're making four costs a little more consistent at level eight. So one cost show up 18%, 18%, two cost 27 being reduced to 25, three cost 32, 32, and then four cost 20 to 22. So fast aiding should be a little bit better. And this is overall a nerf to the reroll comps. I hope they're not killing reroll by doing this change plus a bunch of other changes, but we'll see. Large changes, okay, large like this patch for real real, okay. Uh, let's scroll down a bit. Arcana, high Arcana Zera true damage per three charms. This one's being nerfed again. Wasn't this nerfed in the last one as well? Did they talk about it here? They don't really talk about it. So I guess it was still too strong. I remember I was playing a game and this was after the first nerf and I used my Arcana thing on my Zerath and my opponent asked me, why did you put it on Zerath? It got nerfed and I was like, because it's stage six and I have a lot of charms. <laughs> I don't know. It deals like a ton of true damage, right? It still should do that. It is going to be reduced a little bit. But in the late game, it still should be the best one. I'm talking about like midway through stage 6 or even stage 7. If not, the other Arcanas are probably too strong, I think. Because I feel like this is supposed to be used for late game, not for early game. Because you need to stack all the charms. Blaster, base damage, amplification. This one's going to be buffed up at 2 blaster, 4 blaster, and 6 blaster. So blasters are getting a huge buff. And then after cast, this one's also getting buffed. Okay, so they're making Blaster Spat craftable, and then they're also buffing Blaster. To be honest, we haven't seen too many four or six Blaster builds. You normally only do that if you get something absolutely crazy. And from what I remember, all the Blaster augments were kind of lackluster, so maybe this is a pretty good change. Reworking Chrono Base Timer until effect 16 seconds to 14 seconds, and then Chrono Heal now happens at the start of the time stop rather than at the end. That's fair. 6 chrono stun duration increased to 4 seconds. 6 chrono attack speed dropped from 80% to 40%, but AP increased from 45% to 80%. So like a small rework there. Nothing too crazy happening here. Eldritch 3, slightly higher base stats. Eldritch 5, slightly higher base stats in 4+, and then Eldritch 7, higher base stats in 4+, as well. This one makes sense. No one's really been playing deep Eldritch that much unless you get very specific augments. And I feel like it's a comp that's been missing for most of this set so far. Fairy Trait Breakpoints is being changed from 2469 to 3579. This makes a lot of sense. I honestly don't know why I wasn't like this in the first place. Actually, hmm... This is tough to say. Maybe 2468 would have made sense. I don't, I don't know, actually. I'm making stuff up now. I feel like the 2 thing was kind of cool. Because if you really just wanted the Queen's Crown, you could just get it really easily. Now you have to invest a bunch into it. But I'm hoping you can unlock the armor at 5. So let's see what they did. Fairy 3 is 200 HP. Gain a Queen's Crown that grants 30% damage amp. Fairy 5, 400 HP. Gain a Queen's Crown at 45% damage amp. And gain Queen's Guard armor. 
Fairy 7, 600 HP, and a second crown at 55%. And lastly, Fairy 9, 900 HP, and items become radiant. So you can get two crowns. That sounds like a lot. That means you don't need to build many items when you go deep into fairies. This could be a very fun comp to try out. Just eyeballing this, it sounds pretty good, especially getting the Queen's Guard armor very early. I feel like this has to be good, right? Maybe I'm crazy. Honey Mancy now always grants five Bs, passes two on death, and then it's still gonna be a three, five, seven. At three, you're gonna have 6% damage dealt, 3% damage taken. Five is 8% damage dealt, 4% damage taken, and then seven is 15 damage dealt, 10% damage taken, and Bs fire twice as fast. So before it was 8% of damage and 3% of damage taken at all levels, but you gained 3 Bs at 3, 5 Bs at 5, and 7 Bs at 7. So now you always get 5 Bs, and then you also pass 2 on death before you only pass 1. So overall, it's probably still similar. It just adds up a bit differently. This is one of the ones where I feel like we should read the prompt. Honey Mancy had a unique scaling challenge caused by the bees dealing the same damage at each breakpoint, which didn't allow for enough balance levers to get the trait into a stable spot. Any buff to individual B output for 5 Honeymancy and 7 also buff 3, which was already good, and players are rarely encouraged or rewarded for pursuing 7 Honeymancy. Now each breakpoint will offer 5 Bs, but you'll transfer 2 Bs to an ally on death, making it more beneficial to build a hive full of Honeymancers. We've also added specific balance levers to the damage from the Bs so that we can pack each trait breakpoint with enough stinging power to merit the investment. All right, so they're essentially trying to make later Honeymancy more worth it. I'm all for that. It's a hilarious comp just because of the name. And on PBE, I love like the big Honeymancy comps. So Hunters 6 now also grants 20% attack speed. Hunter AD is being nerfed at 4 Hunter and 6 Hunter. And then Hunter Post Takedown AD is being buffed at 2 Hunter but nerfed at 6. So they're making early hunters a little bit better, nerfing for a hunter and I think buffing six hunter because you get the 20% attack speed but you lose a little bit of AD. Let's read the thing for this one as well. They don't have a thing there. Okay, that's okay. You also have to keep in mind you can now craft the hunter trait with the frying pan. I wonder how that changes things. So it's going to be easier to reach stuff like six hunter. Mage trait breakpoints 3579 being changed to 35710. So it's a new prismatic trait. And mage 10 is being changed from 150% AP to 140. But mage casts much more frequently because their max mana is lowered. I think they're lowering it to 20 mana for every single mage, which is absolutely bonkers. I feel like 10 mage is going to be very, 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 very very OP. But it makes sense because every 10 trait should be pretty OP, but I think it's going to be more so than some of the other ones. So portal 10 effect interval is being changed from 2 seconds to 2.25. Bomb base damage is being nerfed as well. Like I think it's going to be much better than 10 portal, right? Am I crazy? I'm not because there are 8 portal units, but there are only 7 mages, so you need an extra spat for it, so it has to be much better, right? Makes sense. Scholar 3 mana per attack is being changed to 3 mana per attack and 10 AP. 4 Scholar, 6 mana per attack, being changed to 5 mana per attack, and 15 AP. So 2 Scholar being buffed. I think 4 Scholars honestly also being buffed. I feel like the AP might be worth more than the 1 mana per attack. And then they're also reworking 6 Scholar is being changed from 12 mana per attack to 10 mana and 20 AP and abilities heal ally for 15% of the damage done. Let's see what they have to say about Scholar up here. They don't really talk about it. Okay, so the stuff I did not have questions on, and then the stuff I'm wondering more about, they don't. But they had Honeymancy. That's what I wanted to check too, so I gotta give them some credit. This feels like it's better though. I know that they gain less mana, but mixing mana with AP is a really good combo. You would know that if you watch my fundamentals video from like two sets ago. What I think they're trying to do is making the deeper traits a bit better. That seems to be the pattern here. Like six scholar is gonna be good. Seven Honeymancy, they're hoping it's better. Fairies feel like a lot better than they were before. Eldritch, same thing. Chrono, they added a bunch of six stuff, which is pretty cool. Blasters buffed across the board. So it seems like they're just trying to buff up the later parts of the trait breakpoints. Warrior, double damage amp, HP threshold, 60% to 70. Warrior damage and Omnivamp is being toned down at 6 Warrior. And then they're also reworking 6 Warrior and now also grants 20% durability. That seems pretty good. I think that's worth the 5% Omnivamp that you lose uh, doubled. 
So that's 10%. Would you rather have 20% durability or 10% more Omnivamp? Since you already do have a bunch of Omnivamp, I'd probably say you want the durability after that. So I'm assuming 6 Warrior gets better after that. 4 Witchcraft now poisons enemies dealing 4% of their max health per second as magic damage. And then 8 Witchcraft all curses increase from 40% to 50%. So Witchcraft is a little bit interesting because I know for a fact that 6 Witchcraft is absolute dog water. Do you want to know how I know that? I go to teamfight.lol, I go to traits under stats, and then I type in witchcraft here, and you notice a funny pattern. So, 8 witchcraft, fantastic, no one's debating that. But you need 2 spats to make that work, which is pretty hard to do. 2 witchcraft, pretty good, 4.28. You just run Morgana plus something else, and that's all you really care about, right? 4 Witchcraft, 4.58, makes sense that it's a little below average because you never really go for the middle points of trait breakpoints. You know, either normally dip a little bit, such as 2, or you go deep, such as 8. But then you look at 6 Witchcraft, and then you're like, 4.73? How is it that bad? The answer is because it is bad. So hopefully since 4 is buffed, maybe this one's better than the old 4 Witchcraft effect, which was healing the lowest health witch for 15% of damage taken. Maybe the damage aspect is a bit better. So now onto the units, units tier 1. They're reworking Ash, and they're making her stacking effect permanent now for the rest of combat. So for the rest of combat, Ash fires an additional arrow at nearby enemies that deals 30% attack damage, plus 5, 8, 12% AP physical damage. This effect now stacks, and they're changing the mana from 30 out of 80 to 50 out of 100. I have a feeling we're going to see some like Rageblade Shoujin builds, and I've not seen Rageblade Shoujin as a combo for... I guess Rise can do it, that's pretty much it. But this should be pretty fun to see, just like an infinite stacking Ash. You try to build some tank items on your tanks to delay the game as much as possible, and then Ash just hits everything really, really quickly. Jax's abilities, armor and MR ratio is going to be reduced a little bit at two and three star. I think this is in response to the reroll multi-striker builds. Those are actually pretty powerful in the last patch. Jace, armor and MR gain is being changed from 35 to 25. He was like a very good one cost unit. I felt like after the early game, he kind of sucks because they're just better units to run in whatever traits he has. But in the early game, I've seen him do some nasty stuff. Reworking Namzi's ability, sneeze, fire at the target, dealing 400% AD plus 40, 60, 100% AP physical damage. 50% of overkill damage is dealt to the two closest targets, so they're adding in that nice little overkill effect. It's previously only on the item Luden's Echo, but having it on a champion is going to be pretty cool. Reworking Namzi's Dragon Upgrade, it now deals 555% attack damage plus a bunch of AP physical damage instead, and overkill now hits four targets. Anamzi's ability projectile speed has also been increased. Ability now deals damage in a single instance and AD being changed from 50 to 46. I wonder why the 46, that seems a little random. Was it really that much different from 45? We'll have to see. I'm probably going to be data checking Namzi on teamfight.lol maybe like a day after the patch is live. And this patch is going to go live on September 11th. Spooky, I know. So whichever country you're in or whichever time zone you're in, that's the day it's going to be live. By the time I post this video, it'll already be live on, I think, like the Australia and maybe like the Japan server. But Twitch's ability logic update, Twitch can now angle his shots slightly to hit more targets so long as his current target will still be hit. That's pretty good. Twitch's ability now correctly states that he sunders before dealing damage in the tooltip. I was a little confused by that. Good to confirm this now. And then Warwick's ability AD ratio is going to be buffed at 1 and 2 star. Fair enough. He's by far the worst Vanguard unit, unless he's 3 star with items. With specific items, I should actually add. Units tier 2. Okay, reworking Ari. I think we are looking forward to this one the most because we've been dominated by Ari for the past couple weeks. Fire an orb at the current target that deals a bunch of AP magic damage and launch three foxfires at enemies near the target, each dealing a bunch of true damage. Gain an additional foxfire this combat. So Ari is going to be a stacking unit where the more you cast, the more stacks you get. So I'm assuming you're going to want to do some heavy mana builds. Her primary orb is now single target and no longer deals damage to targets it passes through or returns. 
And Ari's orb will now redirect to a new target if the initial target dies mid-flight. So pretty much, you just want her to cast a bunch and get as many Foxfire things as possible. I also did hear that they're changing the passive effect of Ari, where she gains 30% additional AP from AP sources, but I don't see that here, so I guess they took that out. Another interesting build you might be able to do with Ari is maybe put a Morello on her because she hits a lot of different targets now. That could be fun to try too. So Akali's ability AD is going to be changed from 250, 250, 265 to a flat 260, and then the empowered attacks bonus AD, and she gets three attacks after she casts, is going to be changed from 135, 135, 150 to 140 flat. So that means the one and two stars of Akali are going to be buffed, and then the three star is going to be nerfed a bit. Reworking Cassiopeia, empower the next three attacks to deal 135, 200, and 300% AP bonus magic damage. Mana is also going to be changed from 50 to 30, and then attack speed going to be nerfed a bit. And Cassio's ability now casts instantly. Her ability can now trigger wit's end. Do they talk about Cassiopeia a bit here? Because I thought the old Cassiopeia was a pretty fun and unique champion, but the windowed output of Cassiopeia's ability made her reliant on items like Rageblade without viable AP focus build options. I thought they liked that. Didn't they like AP champions that build different things than what normally is built, and AD champions same thing? I thought they always had one of those champions in every set. With this rework, she'll retain her affinity for attack speed, but now have access to more diversified builds and higher, more reliant baseline power. So this depends on what your definition of diversity is. If you can just build the same AP items on every AP champ, is that actually diverse? I don't know. But for Cassiopeia specifically, yes, her build path is more diverse because instead of building like 10 Rage Blades on her, maybe you just want one and then some AP items. So I guess it depends on how you look at it that way. But overall, I, I think I like the old Cassiopeia. It was kind of cool to have those champs that like just use one build because I feel like there should exist in the set champions that are very item reliant and champions that are not item reliant. She probably still is item reliant, but not to the same extent as before. Kasten ability stab damage 110, 165, 255 is going to be 110, 165, 245, so 3 star is getting nerfed a bit. I feel like this is collateral damage because the Ash Jax reroll build is so good. Sometimes they get cast in 3 star as well. But gone are the days of like the pure cast in reroll builds from the very first patch. Kog'Maw ability AD. Kogma was broken, right? 3 star, 290% to 280%, so small nerf there. I'm glad that they're not completely gutting it. We have to remember, all these like 2 cost changes and 1 cost changes, uh, fast aiding did get buffed a lot because of the rolling odds being changed where you get four costs at 22% instead of 20. So keep that in mind as we're reading through these reroll changes or like low cost champion changes. Nyla, AD% percent being nerfed at 3 star, Rumble's ability damage, 220, 330, 515, again being nerfed at 3 star. I hope they do buff Molten Caramel a bit then because I feel like that was like the second worst hero augment. Granted, most of the hero augments were very good, but I think I don't want them to be unplayable, right? Reworking Shivana's Dragon 3 bonus, double the size of the aura, it deals 30% more damage. Shivana no longer deals damage the instant enemies enter her aura. A small HP nerf, and then ability damage per second is going to be increased at all levels. At 3 Dragon, that could be pretty cool. I've been waiting for a Shivana carry build, but she hasn't really been too viable. She kind of jumps and then dies. Even at 3 star, I find the same thing happening. Like 2 or 3 star, I don't really feel that much of a difference. Syndra ability primary damage is going to be increased at 1 and 2 star, but decreased at 3 star. AoE damage increased across the board. Syndra has been asleep for a couple of weeks. I actually hope that there would be viable Syndra builds, but they're buffing Eldritch. They're buffing Syndra now, so maybe you could do like a Syndra Eldritch build and keep her 2 star and then combine her with other champions such as like Nami. I feel like that should be viable, you know? Maybe not completely bonkers OP like it was in the first patch, but at least something viable. Tristana's ability AD% percent is going to be increased at 1 star, the same at 2 star, and then decrease at 3 star. Wait, what? So it's better as a 1 star than it is at 2 and 3 star. Is this a typo? Do they talk about it? They don't talk about it, so maybe it's a typo. Maybe it's 340, 340, 350. No way Riot Games makes a mistake in their patch notes, though. Uh, Tristana ability AP, 40, 55, 90, is being changed to 40, 60, 90, so two-star Tristana's getting buffed up a little bit. I guess we can't talk about this too much because we have to confirm if this is a typo or not. So I checked another preview for the patch notes just now, and 
on Tristana, they don't talk about that, so maybe this is wrong. Zillion initial damage is going to be decrease at 3 star, and the secondary damage is also decrease at 3 star. What did they mean by this change? I guess I have seen some 3 star Zillions. They don't do anything too crazy, but Zillion as a unit alone is so good already that I guess getting him 3 star for free in random games makes him too strong because he's just a very solid unit. He's just a stunner and he's got great traits, so there's nothing ever wrong with Zillion. Like, he is pretty OP, right? But I don't know if his 3 star damage is the OP part. Units tier 3, let's take a look. Bard ability damage is being buffed up across the board. Maybe we see some reroll Bard builds. I've been kind of waiting for that. He's an interesting unit. He's kind of more supportish because he gives your team damage amp i think it's like 10 percent but there still probably should be some carry builds built around him reworking ezreal's ability fire a blast in a wide line through the current target dealing a bunch of ad physical damage to enemies hit reduced by 25 percent for each enemy it passes through a lot of people are saying this is the way they were going to change it before and it makes perfect sense because before like he'd throw his ults even three star ezreal with like perfect items and then the backline damage units that he hits they still take like four or five casts to kill which doesn't really happen, right? But the first target hit takes an additional AP scaling magic damage. If an enemy is adjacent, blink to safety before firing. Ezreal's ability blink is reserved for situations where there's an adjacent threat. Will now blink to the location furthest from the most enemies. And then he also recovers from firing slightly faster, and he recovers from blinking faster. So this is probably going to be a bit better. He's going to be similar to a lot of champions in the past. They definitely have a write-up for him here, but pretty much the old Ezreal was just so garbage like no one ever played it. With Rise and providing ample multi-target damage, Portal could benefit from a champion who deals some heavier single target damage to the front line. Although Ezreal's blink could get him out of trouble on occasion, we want to focus on him being a stand and deliver champion so his blink will be reserved for getting out of serious trouble. I'm hoping that blaster reroll builds will be viable something with like Huey Ezreal that's actually what I'm most looking forward to instead of just like changing it for portal builds because I've been playing portal a long time already in this patch in this set and I want to try out some of the blaster reroll comps because it's been like a little lackluster so far so hopefully that version is going to be a bit better reworking Hecker and passive on takedown of current target empower the next attack to deal AD and AP scaling physical damage if the next target is out of range charge them Hecarim's ability cleave is also going to be nerfed a little bit and Hecker resolves his charges faster especially at shorter ranges he can now attack earlier after resolving a charge and let's see what they have to say about him Hecarim's passive suggests the dream of a reset champion but that dream depends on circumstances the enemies being far away often outside his control as a melee champion rather than only powering up when a unit is out of range charges now trigger after any takedown okay yeah that's a lot cooler giving this horse more opportunity to go buck wild we're also updating the visuals for his charge, which will make the passive more exciting, resolve faster, and allow him to get cleaving sooner. I think that's a great change. The takedowns are fun to see, and like reset champions, always great to look at. Huey, ability delay before target hit being changed from 1.3 seconds to 1 second. That's a pretty sizable buff. I feel like all the blaster champions take forever to actually deal damage. Reworking Jinx's ability, gain 125% decaying attack speed for 4 seconds for the duration. Attacks fire rockets that deal 100% AD and some AP physical damage, ignoring 50% armor. So you don't need to build Last Whisper on her anymore, so maybe you could just do like Double Rage Blade Gwinsu's, that'd be kind of cool. You could probably build Double Rage Blade Runons instead of having the Last Whisper there, or maybe do a Runons Gwinsu's Death Blade build, that could be pretty cool too. Mordekaiser ability on cast 10% AP being changed to 12% damage amp. Are they talking about a stacking thing? Because he stacks and gains permanent AP throughout the fight. That's what I thought it to be before. So it's going to be damage amp instead. Mordekaiser's ability shield is going to be buffed up to kind of compensate for that. So I guess they want him to deal more damage rather than like go infinite with this change. Because obviously if he gets more AP, his shielding gets bigger and he does a little bit more damage. Whereas now it just is like a pure damage buff. But they did compensate his shield. So that's kind of cool. Mordekaiser I feel like was already in a decent spot. He's probably still is. So. So yeah, his shield scaling with AP that also scaled with total number of casts left him in a position where he was a serious threat to enemy teams when he was well itemized and took the role of a secondary tank, allowing him to ramp throughout the fight. We'd like him to lean more into his frontline bruiser role with a shield that focuses on serving the clash of early fights rather than something that reaches an unkillable state. Okay, so they don't want him to stack then. I guess the damage amp does not stack at all. Is that what I'm reading correctly here? Oh no, it still does stack. We're leaning further into his ramping damage. But okay, so his tanking doesn't stack, but his damage stacks a lot. Okay, now onto the big one, which is going to be 
Wukong. Actually, no, there's Nico first. Ability, self-heal, 15%. HP, plus 100 is being changed to 12%, plus 200. What's the break point for that? Around like 3,300 health. So this is probably going to be a buff. I forget how big Nico gets after the shapeshifter thing, but it feels like having like the higher base might be a bit better, especially in the early game. I'm guessing like just early game, it's going to be buffed. Later game, going to be a little weaker. Maybe I'm just doing the math wrong. I don't know. But uh, let's get into more important stuff because Wukong's rework is going to be pretty big. My friend told me a little bit about it, but combat start, gain 40 armor and magic resistance, lose one of each every second, and then he also gets... 55 to 50 armor and MR. So he's going to be like a tank that like blitzes people. I, I don't know if that made sense. I mean blitz in the football term, not the League of Legends term. Maybe you want to build like a crown guard on him. Maybe the stone plate stuff still works. This one, we have to read that one, right? Wukong's passive combined his abilities, armor and MR scaling led to a feast or famine situation where a Wukong with three items performed exceptionally well, while a Wukong without any felt weak. As a standalone threat-like unit in the set, he should feel flexible enough to be played with and without items. I 1000% agree with that. He is not like a threat unit right now. You have to build around him in the current state, and that's not what threat units are. As an item holder or as a capstone of specific compositions when well itemized. Our rework to his passive here should make his unitemized version feel much better. At the same time, the unkillable solo frontline Wukong with perfect items will be slightly easier to take down later in a fight. Alright, that's a very fair change. It sounds weird, right? Because we've never seen an effect like this before. But I really want to have some sort of threat unit. Threats were kind of like one of my favorite sets, so hopefully he should act more like that. Vagar ability damage is going to be nerfed at 1 star, nerfed at 2 star, and nerfed at 3 star. Holy cow. Vagar was good. I don't know if he was that good though, you know? Combine this with the 4 cost buffs. I don't know. Let's, let's see what else happens to the units tier 4 now. Reworking Gwen's ability because she now has new dash logic. She now dashes up to 3 hexes to the hex furthest from the most enemies that could still snip her target. Gwen's ability snip damage is going to be buffed up across the board. Tooltip now displays the number of snips the next cast will do. It also now takes a fixed amount of time regardless of her total snips. And then damage is now a separate number instead of stacking. Gwen also recovers from the final snip slightly faster. Alright, so although Gwen's ultimate ability is a familiar pattern, she doesn't have the protective mechanics a bonus armor and MR, or Shadow Isle shield from previous incarnations. This often led her to cut too close to the edge of her health bar as she attempts to cut down the enemies. Instead of adding more defensive stats to allow her to survive as she threads through the front line, we're making her much smarter. Now you can expect Gwen to dash to a more optimal position, hit even more foes, snip them faster, and get back to snipping again even sooner, all while prioritizing her safety unexpectedly for someone who loves running with scissors. All right, so Gwen was already in a good spot, I feel like. Maybe she was a little strong, but I, I love playing Gwen. If she lives longer, great. It seems like a buff from what I'm reading. I don't know if she really needed a buff. They don't really say whether this is like a overall buff or nerf. So I'm gonna assume it's just a buff because it seems like every effect that we've read so far just makes her better, unless I'm crazy. I know I've said that a bunch this patch review, but um, I have to repeat it because sometimes I'm not thinking completely straight. Olaf mana, 30 out of 80 being changed to zero out of 50. Leap and cleave AD is going to be buffed up from 160 to 180. So those are huge Olaf buffs. Holy cow. Wait, is Olaf going to be OP after this? The Frostfire comp was a little weak. So I'm assuming this plus the blaster changes is going to make it a lot better. Well, there's Varus down here. We'll read him a bit later. Rakan max mana buff is going to be changed from 60 out of 140 to 40 out of 120. That's a pretty sizable buff. Base shield value is going to be bumped from 80 to 180 and then 100 to 200. Did Rakan really need this? Keep in mind, again, like it's easier to hit four costs now. So I, I don't know. Varus ability rework. Fire a supernova at a cluster of enemies within attack range plus one hexes that deals a bunch of AD and AP physical damage to the target and all adjacent enemies. It explodes into a cluster of fireballs dealing 40, 40, 80% of initial damage as physical damage to all other enemies within three hexes. Varus's AD is being changed from 70 to 55. Varus's ability fires earlier in the cast time. The cast time resolves slightly faster and cast time now scales slightly more with attack speed. Varus no longer ends his animation early to attack from mid-air, and he now prioritizes dealing the most total damage rather than hitting the most targets. 
Varus now deals damage to secondary targets more reliably by firing at each secondary target within three hexes. Yeah, before he just fired them and they kind of exploded and if they hit, they hit, and if not, they didn't. These secondary shots will track their target. He'll still fire a few secondary shots to empty hexes, but this is just for aesthetics. Varus three star now hits in a one hex larger radius. Okay, let's read what they have here. Varus is meant to be the big boom caster of the set but has been seeing some consistency issues. These changes should help him be more reliable in his output. Additional attack speed scaling on his cast time will help higher tiers of pyro feel good on him, though players should still want to build all out damage for the bigger supernova chunks. Drop his AD by 15 though, like is that worth it? Being able to hit more units more reliably for 15 AD? Probably is worth it, right? I'm actually really excited to try the Varus Olaf builds. It seems like it's going to be pretty good in the next patch because Way got buffed, Olaf got buffed, Varus got buffed, Forecast got buffed, this comp loves Forecast. It is going to be a little bit harder to get the spatulas because you love spatula in that comp because it builds either Frost or Pyro, but now since they introduced frying pans, it might be a little bit harder to get because in cases where you would normally get a spatula, you get a frying pan instead now or have like a chance to. So going deep into those traits might be a little bit more difficult. Hmm, we'll have to really see there. Units tier five, Milio max mana buff, 40 out of 120 to zero out of 90. Yeah, Milio is just a support unit. I think they want to make Milio feel good as like a semi carry at least. Not like a full-blown carry, but like at least do something, right? Other than pure support. Don't get me wrong, Milio is like probably one of the best support units, especially at Legendary. But sometimes you want like damage from your 5 cost, right? Nora and Yumi base damage is going to be buffed up across the board. Nora and Yumi AD and AP granted, going to be nerfed a little bit. And then Yumi's heal is going to be buffed at 2 star. So I guess they're putting more power into Nora, less power into Yumi. I think that's fair because some people just played Nora for the Yumi effect. They just play like a naked Nora, no traits, no nothing, uh, just to buff up someone with Yumi, which is interesting because it's using stuff without a trait, but I think they hate that. So they'd rather you want to play Nora for Nora, it looks like from these changes. Probably still plays a role somewhere, right? Reworking Smolder's ability, gain 50% attack speed for the next four attacks. These attacks launch fireballs that deal a bunch of AD and AP as physical damage. And then Smolder's dragon upgrade, the next six attacks, fireballs deal 130% of fireball damage as physical Physical damage, Smolder's ability now empowers a fixed number of attacks, and Dragon Upgrade now increases the number of fireballs and the damage they deal. Smolder can now gain a maximum of 1000 bonus move speed from all sources, so I guess they want Rageblade builds to be a bit less good on Smolder, and you should hopefully be able to build some other stuff because they're fixing the number of attacks that the ability empowers. You might be sensing a trend of reducing the number of champions that feel like they must have attack speed items, and Smolder is on that list. We want to provide diversity in his build while still allowing attack speed to be one of the better build paths. For the dragon upgrade, we wanted to focus on blah blah blah. Okay. Reworking Zerath. Ability now can only target randomly between the closest five enemies. So you no longer drill backline units for no reason. Zarath ability calculates the closest enemies on each blast launch, so killing an enemy gives you access to the next closest enemy. And then Zara's ability to damage is going to be buffed up to compensate for that. So overall, it's probably still going to be the same. He's, he's probably just going to mow through the closest five anyways, right? Like, let's think about it. If you run eight units in your comp, you have four units in the back and four units in the front, right? Let's just do like Blaster and Bastion. I know this is not a, like a real comp, but I'm just putting random units out there, right? But this is what most comps look like. So if you're Zarath in the back, you're going to target one, two three, four, five. So you're still hitting backline in a lot of cases if everyone's spread out. Even if the tanks are all together like this, it's still one, two, three, four, and then maybe like a five over there. After you kill one of them, plus like the weak tank, right? You take these off, you get access to the backline anyway. So I feel like it's still gonna be good, but maybe if you're on the receiving end, you're not gonna feel as mad because he just sniped your backline for no reason. Like that does happen all the time. Yeah, he'll still have backline access that'll increase as the frontline falls and you could use skillful positioning. So what they mean by skillful positioning is just swap him to the same side as the enemy carry. I feel like that's more RNG positioning, but it is what it is. Overall, I think Zarath still should be good and hopefully he kills tanks a little bit faster now. I also think this means that comps where you're like solely relying on Zarath might be a bit better. I'm not 100% sure on that take, but I know some games where I fast nined and got Zerath 2 and my whole team was one star, like he didn't kill anything because he hit like eight different targets instead of just focusing on like a couple. Maybe now that he can focus on a couple, 
they might die a little faster, right? Even if they are tanks. But let's move on into the next stuff, which is augments. So they have some new and reworked augments. Arcane Conduit is now banned on 2-1. Arcana champions deal 10% bonus damage. If they start combat holding two items, they gain a recommended third completed item. Gain an Ari and a Hecarim. So you pretty much don't have to build too many items when you take this. That's kind of cool. Draconic Mastery banned on 3-2 and 4-2. Dragons gain 10% health and 18% attack speed after dragons score 60 champion takedowns. Gain a Smolder, gain a Namzi, and a Shivana. Wow, that sounds really cool. I want to try this. 60 champion takedowns do take a long time though, because at the start of the game, let's say you have Namzi and Shivana 2 star at 2 1, right? And they kill everything. In stage 2, they're around like an average of 5 units on the enemy team. Maybe a little less than that. Maybe like 4.5. So in stage 2 1, you kill 4 units. 2 2, you kill another 4. 2 3, you kill another 4. 2 5, you kill 5, and then another 5. So you have 22 takedowns. Then in stage three, you get a plus five, a plus six, another plus six, maybe a plus seven, and then another plus seven. You're at 53. So you get your first smolder on stage four one or on stage four two. That's if both your dragons kill everything and you won every round and you face everyone who leveled up relatively quickly. So realistically speaking, you're probably going to see the first smolder maybe around like stage four or five ish, but it still seems like a fun thing to kind of try out. They're reworking flexible to be a prismatic augment instead of a gold. And then the flexible number of stages for an emblem is being changed from two to every stage. And then the team health per emblem 10 to 40. Flexible can no longer grant duplicate emblems. All right, that seems pretty fair. It was OP and they tried nerfing it multiple times. It was still OP. So making it a prismatic makes complete sense. Reworking Frosty Frontline as it has been renamed to rework to Winter is Coming. Wait, I love the name Frosty Frontline. No, come on, man. The Frost trait also grants one placeable Frost Wolf equipped with a Protector's Vow. The Wolf gains 40% attack speed and 300 health per Frost tier. Gain a Warwick and a Zillion. I mean, it's pretty much the same thing, except you don't get to slow people's attack speed. The Frost Wolf obviously does do stuff, but I think the target dummy was kind of cool, right? It's probably going to be net no change, I'm guessing, but I, I really liked Frosty Frontline. I don't think they needed to change this. Pillars of Flame 3-2 only gain two Shens. Your strongest Shens ability no longer grants damage reduction, but now summons a large molten pillar that damages enemies in a large line. So it's a Shen hero augment. Okay, that's kind of cool. We were memeing on Shen like a video ago, so I feel like this is something to kind of explore. But let's look at some of the other augments. So called shot gold is being buffed from two to four. I pretty much never took this. Uh, hopefully it is takeable now. Combat bandages one healing being nerfed a little bit. Oh yeah, combat bandages was bugged. It apparently did not work after a certain stage. So they fixed that bug, so it's more effective, but they're making a compensation nerf. That's fair. So it should be net even. Fix a bug where combat bandages would stop functioning after stage four. Fine vintage turns to proc four to three. There haven't been many good fine vintage comps yet. It probably does exist though. We probably just haven't figured it out yet, but maybe now since it's buff, people will figure it out and then they need to change it back. Good for something chance for gold, 40% to 50%. So that's a pretty good buff. Item collector, completely auto take broken bonkers. It's being nerfed. Precise planning, gold dropped two to three. Restart mission no longer grants duplicate copies of champions. I think that's good. It's already a pretty good augment. Rolling for days, rerolls nine to 11. I didn't know that it needed a buff, but apparently it does. High horsepower Lilia bonus damage is being nerfed a bit. Spider Queen Elise bonus damage being nerfed a bit. Duration nerfed a bit as well because you wanted to deal damage as fast as possible. Witchy Wallop ability damage 85 to 75. Zap Attack Blitzcrank nerfed across the board. Sweet Tooth Nunu 2% per 100 HP is being changed to 2% per 150. All these, I think, you just have to data check. Hopefully, it's going to be break even, maybe at a 4.44 or something like that. But obviously, in its current state, probably a little bit too strong because these were auto takes, they were the S tiers, but I still want them to be playable. I don't want them to be unplayable, right? Because these are very like beginner friendly ways to play the game. And like some of my friends, they like love playing these and they don't have time to play every day, right? So they just want to like get a comp, force it at the start of the game and like be done with it. So hopefully they're still viable, but I don't want it to be in a state where I have a two star Lilia at the start of the game. I get high horsepower and I don't take it because it sucks too much like that. That wouldn't be fun either, you know? Golden Quest, gold required 162 to 196. Holy cow. It was pretty OP, but 
Normally people hit it around stage four two. And if you gain maybe like 10 gold a turn, they're delaying it by like another three turns potentially, you're gonna be dead. So you can only take this if you got like raining gold at the start of the game or if it's scuttle puddle or if it's like gold subscription because i don't know it's gonna be hard to hit 196 am i wrong avenge the fallen stats being buffed up a bunch yeah i think this augment's pretty cool as a combat augment but we haven't really seen it too much bees friends honeymancy shield power 25 percent to 10 percent big gains hp per stack 10 to 20 category 5 damage 95 to 90 cauterize pyro damage per cinder 3 to 5 clockwork accelerator attack speed per stack 9 to 10 no one took this after the previous buffs maybe now it's takeable it was at a 4.76 before so maybe it's going to be at like a 4.6 or something combat bandages to healing they're nerfing it but they buffed up the bug defensive arts has been disabled fortune favors the bold 2 through 9 loss heavily lowered in value Fortune favors the bold 10 through 12, loss slightly lowered in value. Yeah, this was pretty much like an auto win augment. It felt pretty stupid unless you got griefed at the start of the game. Heroic grab bag, gold 6 and 9. Item collector, nerfed, makes perfect sense. Little buddies no longer counts non-champions. I didn't know it even did that. Was that why it was so good? Do they talk about it here? They don't really talk about it here. But it was always a good augment, even in comps that didn't play too many one or two cost units. And I always wondered why. Like, I still took it, but now I know why. It's because it counted non-champions for some reason. Potions, 201. AD and AP being nerfed a bit. Press the attack, multi-striker, true damage being nerfed. Yeah, this is completely broken. Prize fighter components granted, 1 to 2. Prize fighter wins per component, 3 to 4. Oh, so that's even more like go big or go home. But overall, it is a buff. You just get more components. Slide a hand, HP, 200 to 100. Trait tracker emblems awarded, 5 to 6. Trait tracker disabled on trainer golems portal. Makes sense. Hard commit champion granted tier stage plus one is being changed to just the stage. So that's a pretty big nerf. This is supposed to be a beginner augment. And in the data, I'm looking at master plus. It's at a 4.16. So yeah, it probably did need the nerf, right? Upgraded adventure starting units four to two. Upgraded adventure loot tables updated. What the forge now grants an additional artifact anvil. Wow. That's pretty good. That's a large buff, but this time to improve its early game where it significantly lags behind other prismatics. Now upon selecting the augment, you'll receive an artifact anvil to kickstart your collection with more control over the outcome. Yeah. Is that too good now? I don't know. It could be. Core items. Spam casters have had their run for the first few patches. Yeah, that's true. Adaptive helm backline bonus AP 20 to 15. Adaptive helm backline bonus no longer counts the time spent while mana locked towards its tick rate. Nasher's Tooth. It's probably still going to be a good item though because Adaptive has always been a good item and the reason why it's so good right now is because of the mana changes that they did at the start of the set but it's probably still going to be a good item. Nasher's Tooth AP being reduced a bit. Nasher's Tooth attack speed proc being increased so this is going to be a more so an attack speed item than an AP item. So I'm guessing this should be much better on Cassiopeia now. It should be right like it has to be. Spear Shoujin, AD and AP 20 to 15. I'm surprised they're nerfing Shoujin, but not nerfing blue buff. Titans Resolve, AP per stack 1 to 2. So they're rebuffing Titans back to its old state. Pretty much every melee bruiser that's AP now, such as like Mordekaiser. Hecarim scales from AP, if I remember correctly, more so than AD, even though he's a multi-striker. But they did change him. Let's check it out. So he has Cleave AD, but... He also scales from AP. Yeah, look, his AP scaling is pretty high compared to his AD, like at 3-star, that is. So maybe if you get 3-star Hecarim, Titans would be really good. Uh, Titans should be just good on him anyways because he scales really well from both of the stats, uh, whereas some champions, they really only care about one of them, right? So that should be fun to kind of play around with. Uh, Titans Resolve is one of my favorite items. It's just like a pretty neat effect. Radiant Items... Adaptive Helm, Backline Bonus AP being nerfed, Nasher's Tooth, same changes as the other one, Radiant Spear Shoujin, okay, these are just all the same, Artifacts, Mogul's Mail is being changed from 7 to 5 HP per stack, and then the Mogul's Mail Gold Delay, 6 to 9, yeah, this is such a disgustingly good item. All that Shimmers averages like a 4.17, Shimmer Scale Essence averages like a 4.25, and that is like so good, right? Because people are taking it even when it's not the best situation to take it in. And it's still doing incredibly well because you just need any two star frontliner or like a one star three cost at the start of the game. And you just get 20 gold for fun plus a good item. Like it doesn't make any sense. So yeah, they're finally nerfing it really hard now. Like before they did a slight nerf and it was still good. They changed the gold delay from five seconds to six seconds, I believe it was. But now they're hitting it really hard. It might be too hard. But it was really OP, so we have to keep that in mind. Ideally, it should only be good in situations where it 
should be good, such as having a good two star one cost tank at the start of the game with like a complementary unit for it. For example, having like Blitzcrank 2 with a one star Warwick and you have that already before taking the Augment and then you take it, like that should be good, right? If it's not, then like it, they nerfed it too hard. But if you only have like a random two star unit, like let's say you have a two star Jace, no other shapeshifters, like should you take it? Maybe. Maybe that's a borderline case. Maybe you have a slammable tank item on your bench that you could complement it with and like, yeah, sure. But if you just have like a one star Poppy, one star Lilia, and you take it and you still farm 20 gold because you find either a two star in a couple rounds or like a better tank, then that's like pretty OP, right? Which is what the state is in now. I've seen people take this and they don't stack the first few rounds, but then it still gets them like 30 gold or something like that by the time you get to like middle of stage four. And like, that's disgusting, right? Because you have to keep in mind, you still get like a solid item from Mogul's Mail. So it's just too much, but I just hope they don't over nerf it. And it feels like it is a bit of an over nerf, but we'll have to see. Now let's look at the charms barrier. That's going to be a new one. Next combat, your team gains a thousand shield. Decaying over 5 seconds. Counterspell, next combat, Mana Reeves all enemies. I'm surprised there are not many Mana Reeve effects in the set. So I'm glad that they're adding a couple of these. Guild of Thieves, 8 gold, stage 5 plus, gain 3 temporary TGs for 1 round. Infliction, 6 gold, 5 plus, next combat, chill, burn, shred, and sunder enemies for 8 seconds. Meteor Storm, next combat, combat start, burn and deal 30% max health magic damage to 4 enemies. That seems really good, right? I mean, for all these combat augments, if you need them you take them right it, you don't really discriminate too much on that paragon zero gold stage four plus next combat your team's physical damage is dealt as magic reaper four gold stage four next combat your units execute enemies that fall below 200 summon golems eight gold stage five plus summon a large golem equipped with defensive items for one round tremors combat start and every eight seconds stun all enemies for 1.25 seconds so this is like a better version of like the, what is it called? Earthquake or something like that. And there's another one. I forget the name. One of them's two gold, one of them's five gold. But this one's an even better version of those. Desperate Plea is being reworked. Next combat, reduce incoming player damage by 80%. I feel like that's a lot better than the old version. The old version was very annoying if you were like low health, but stronger than some other people. But then you face the giga high roller and then you lose and then the other person does better than you all because this charm showed up in their shop and not yours. Contra Frying Pan, 15 gold, stage 4 plus, gain a frying pan. All fives, gold costs 5 to 8. Reworking Contra Emblem, gain a random uncraftable emblem is being changed to gain a random emblem. Lightning Strike, you can now see the true damage from Lightning Strike. Salvage no longer breaks apart Tactician's Crown. It will also no longer do that to shield or cape and then summon dragon being nerfed again both in hp and ad and gold cost is being nerfed a little bit too so it's less all in but still good i think that's actually like a decent change maybe they should make it like a even cheaper one who knows now onto modes double up minimum reinforcement time 7 to 11 seconds base player damage reduced from 6 to 5 and 8 to 7 in stage 3 and 4 pretty much people were dying too early i remember playing double up with one of my friends and like every game that we won I was like, wait, it's over already? Because I kind of wanted to still like complete my team. And then we kind of stopped playing because it, like we didn't hit anything crazy. So maybe we try this out again. But now let's go on to bug fixes, which is the last part of this patch review. Briar's Ravenous now correctly grants 0.8% magic damage and per missing health instead of 0.6. Fix the bug where Camille's true damage would critically strike less often than intended with ability crit. Fix Briar's light snack tool tip to show correct HP values. Fix a bug where 8 Scholar would deactivate the trait, hilarious. Fix an issue where Deja Vu Augment, Tooltip, and Ability didn't match correctly at 5 AP. Fix an issue where one of the drops of a Prismatic Orb wasn't properly giving full value. Bandage Bandages, we already went through that. Fix an issue where Find Your Center granted twice the intended damage amp. Did that always happen or just sometimes? Fix an issue where Randuin Sanctum would apply its bonuses again when Suspicious Trench Coat clones would spawn. Arcana Emblem now correctly applies and removes the bonus. Too High fix the bug where High Pulse Power Lilia would resolve instantly without her playing her animation. Was that why it was OP or was it just because of the numbers? Who knows? Say that 10 times fast. Chibi Headliner KDA Popstars Kaisa name no longer overruns the loading screen. Players who own House of the Golden Rabbit won't have a high saturation anymore when playing with players who have Heaven Celestial Arena. I thought they fixed this like two patches ago. I guess it was still broken. Pipped up, we went through all arenas with interaction and added pips for every arena with interactions. Radiant Adaptive Helm fixed a bug where the tooltip did not match the correct amount of AP given. 
Wow, okay, so that was a pretty big patch. You know, I thought the reworks would be a little more crazy, but they're tame for the most part. Like, the biggest ones were Wukong, Ezreal, Cassiopeia, Ari. I think those were the major ones. But, like, Gwen probably is the same thing, right? Like, Varys probably is the same thing. Similar, maybe a little bit different. Mordekaiser, probably the same thing. We didn't play that much of Mordekaiser anyways. But I am a little bit scared because I don't want reroll meta change into four cost lottery. Both are bad, right? Like, we can agree on that. This isn't one of those, like, both sides bad memes, right? But, like, both of them have their problems, and I hope they didn't go too much in one direction to compensate for the other. Because it feels like every single reroll got nerfed a little bit. They buffed the four cost odds and then buffed, like, a bunch of different four costs. They're nerfing all the hero augments, so... Again, like, I'm really, 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 really hoping that it's just not forecast lottery and that some rerolls are still viable. I know they say their goal is to make sure that there's a viable one cost reroll, two cost reroll, three cost reroll, and then four and five cost comps, but it just really hasn't felt like that so far. It's been a little reroll heavy in the last patch, but four cost still was playable, but then like fast nining, no one really did that too much. And then before that, we had the Syndra nonsense, but. I don't want like the perception of having reroll be so good for so long because the hero augments were bonkers OP, Ari reroll was really good too, and Syndra from before to just be like, okay, now it's time to just only play four costs and ignore everything else. Like that wouldn't be too fun, right? So hopefully they did their job. I'm gonna be data checking furiously tomorrow because this is honestly so many big changes happened. You kind of just have to play sometimes to figure out what's going to be good and what's not. So luckily, there is a meta snapshot coming out on Friday as it does every single Friday on bunnymuffins.lol slash meta. So do look out for that. Bookmark the page. Tell your friends. Tell your mom. Whoever needs to hear it. But the comps I'm looking most forward to playing is going to be the Frostfire comp. I know it's a four cost comp. I know I was just trashing on four cost comps, but I just love the Olaf and Varys combo that I have to try it out, especially after that they're most likely getting buffed. But they are getting like a slight change because you get less spatulas because you get frying pans half the time now. So it might be a little bit more difficult to go into vertical frost or like vertical pyro because you have a frying pan. I wonder what I have to do with a frying pan. Maybe I could build like hunter spat. Maybe do like a hunter varus. That'd be kind of cool too, right? We'll have to see. We'll have to cook some stuff up. I guess like did they purposely make that meme when they named it spatula early on? I don't even know if that meme existed when TFT came out because TFT came out like five years ago, more than that. Maybe the cooking meme didn't exist yet, but okay, whatever the case, like I'll see you all on Friday. Hopefully you all enjoyed this little rundown. If you ever get the Easter egg of like each of the tactician's items, like let me know in like the next video. So that's gonna be it for me today. Hopefully I'll see you all next time.